how to make a Sankey chart using Tableau. This will probably be my longest how-to yet, and if possible, I urge you to not bring Sankey charts into your visualizations. They can be useful, but they are pretty difficult to build. This chart, I actually use a Google Sheet, and I'll join that into my data. The Google Sheet itself is pretty simple, four columns, and it just has all the points needed to create the curve of the Sankey. To join that data in, connect to the data that you want to make a Sankey chart with. Then you'll want to click on Add next to your connections. Go to Google Drive or save the Sankey points to an Excel file. Connect to that file and join the two together. The join is pretty simple. I do an inner join. On my data source side, I create a, a join calculation that's just the string link. That's going to match with column A in the Sankey points. This is going to increase the size of your data by about tenfold. And to show that, I've created a dashboard. The size of my original data set was just about 10,000 rows. After joining in the Sankey points, it's just about a million. After connecting the two data sources together, you'll need to create some calculated fields. I'd recommend not creating them and instead just downloading my workbook from Tableau Public and as much as possible, copying and pasting those calculations into your own workbook. Those calculations are gonna fall into one of four categories. We have some calculations that help size the Sankey chart. And then we've got three points. We've got point A, where our data begins. We've got the curve that connects point A to point B, and then we have point B. A lot of these calculations are redundant and they're just referencing slightly different fields. I'm not going to go into each one, but you're welcome to open them up and check them out for yourself. In Tableau, a Sankey chart is a collection of three worksheets. You'll have a worksheet for your first point, a worksheet for the curve, and a worksheet for your second point. And you can definitely add or increase the number of points you have. That is going to make the chart more complex. And for this example, I'm only going to use point A and point B. All right, I'm going to take sheet three here and rename it point A. And then I'm going to bring out the point A bar position to rows. From there, I'm going to bring my point A dimension. Now in my case, I'm just gonna use region. I'm gonna drop that on detail. I'm gonna change the mark type from automatic to a Gantt. And then I'm going to put flow size on the size option. I'm going to go into the point A bar position and change how it's computing. Flow size can compute table across, but I want point A bar position to use a specific dimension, and that's region. I'm going to add region to color, and I'm going to put flow size indicator onto label. Now this flow size indicator I will elaborate on. This is simply account distinct. Actually, let me change that to account distinct of order ID. Now, before we create the curve, we're going to create our second point. I'm going to create a new sheet and call it point B. The steps are going to be pretty similar. I'm going to bring out the point B bar position, put that on rows. I'm going to select ship mode as my point B dimension. I'm going to go into the point B par position calculation and change how it's computing. Flow size can compute table across, but I'll change point B bar position to use a specific dimension of ship mode. Then I'm going to change the mark, the mark type to a Gantt bar. 
I'll put flow size onto size and flow size indicator onto label. We could put something here on color as well, but to keep it simple, maybe I'll just make the color dark. Now we're ready for our curve. I'll create a new sheet and call it curve. On the curve sheet, we're going to bring out both our point A and point B dimensions. So I'll bring out region and I'll bring out ship mode. And there's also a field called way of the walk. That is from our Google Sheet Sankey points and I'll drop that on detail as well. Next, I'm going to grab T. I'm going to bring that out and I'm actually going to right click and drag that allows me to select T, the very top option that's non-aggregated. And then I'm going to bring out my curve polygonic. We're gonna click into that curve polygonic calculation and we've got a lot of modifying to do here. This is where most of the clicks come in. Edit table calculation. For point A position max, we're going to use specific dimensions. We're going to drag region to the top, then ship mode. We'll select region and ship mode. And then we're going to go um, to the next option. That would be point A position. Point A position is the same thing. We'll drag region and ship mode to the top. We'll select both of them. But this time we're going to say at the level of region. Point A index is set up the same way. So we'll bring region and ship mode to the top, deselect T, select region and ship mode at the level of region. Okay, halfway through flow size, much of the same. We're going to do region and ship mode, keep it at the deepest level and no restarting. For the next three, point B position calcs, we're going to do a little flip. So we'll select point B position max. We'll use specific dimensions. This time we're going to drag ship mode to the top, followed by region. Select both. Leave it at the deepest and move on to point B position. Select specific dimensions drag ship mode, then region, select them both, but at the level, keep it to ship mode, and do the same thing with point B index. You can see the Sankey start to take place. We're going to change our mark type from automatic to a polygon, and it goes a little bit crazy, but we're going to take our path uh, field in the data pane and just drag that to path. From here, we have a lot of formatting. First thing, I'm going to put region on color. So click on the three dots next to region and add it to color. Then, I, then I'm going to edit the axis and select a custom range. I'll do negative six to positive six. And I'll deselect show header. And I'll do the same thing with the Y axis. I'll put a custom range in there, maybe zero to two. I have to do these, um, keep the Y axis uniform across all my charts. So, so now I have to go do this on my other two charts. zero to two and hide the header. Same thing over here, zero to two and hide the header. Now we're ready to bring them onto a dashboard. I'll create a new dashboard. I'll increase the size I'll bring out point A and point B 
and put my curve in the middle. Oh, that's still pretty small. I'm going to increase the size even more. And I'll just adjust it manually until I get the curve taking up most of the dashboard with my bars on the side. Now you'll see there's a little gap in between the bar and the curve. To fix that, you can go into each side and increase the size to max. And now you have your basic Sankey chart. From here, it's all formatting. You could add things to text just to let us let your end users know where they're going. You could get rid of the trend lines behind the curve. And this should work with filters as well. Just make sure that the filters apply to all worksheets. So if I came in here and selected, let's just do category as a simple filter. I'll select all for now, and then I'll do apply to sheets, all using this data source. So if I pull that filter out on the dashboard, and I'll change it to a single value dropdown or a list. Then when I flip from furniture to office supplies or technology, you can see the numbers change with that filter. There's more stuff we could do, but to get to the heart of it as quickly as possible, that's how you make a Sankey chart in Tableau.